ngayon. Pero so, very good. sayang eh. Yeah, sayang. But it's okay. Sayang mga questions. Yeah. Ay, yeah I heard you also you had a Christmas party recently. <laughs> Christmas slash birthday. Uh, I saw you there yeah. for, for a bit, but uh, you had to go. But yeah. uh, it was very fun. Uh, still Daming recuperating tao. from it. Daming tao. Hungover. <laughs> Just kidding. Still hungover. <laughs> right. So, yeah. Sige, it's a good day for learning. Yeah. Um, it's also Thanksgiving. So, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. So, we're yeah, let's that's have it. A- Two minutes, no? Bago tayo mag-start. Let's wait. Baka some people wanna join pa. Yeah. How many attendees do we have na ba? I saw about 10 kanina. Yeah, we have around 10 ngayon. Pasko na pasko ba yung music natin or what? <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas, guys. November. Oh my God, mag December na time flies so fast. Can't believe it's that's 2020 for us. Yeah, uh, some of us wish, diba? We can even fast forward 2020 to the end. <laughs> <laughs> I will post lang a reminder. Yeah? Sure, sure. Go ahead. Well, you might want to tell them about your uh, Union Union Bank uh, journey. How long have you been with Union Bank? Wow, naging show. Marga. Oh, just uh, um, a, a year. We're building rapport here. Mga, just a year? Yeah, a year pa lang and a few months okay. after JP. So, it's funny because uh, I've been, um an, I've been, I think, an HR pre- not practitioner most of my life and then but were you before a telco company so telco, yeah but it's uh, been a, a, a very passionate about uh startups so um and smes yeah so i think that's why i yeah th- 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 that made me apply to sir jape's team so okay. very aligned in terms of advocacy and i guess goals so yeah yes yes <laughs> helping smes that's our advocacy. That's the goal. <laughs> I think okay. we can start na, no? Yeah. What do you think, ako. Mark? Or should we uh, wait a bit more? Time is Oh, can we wait for five minutes more? Okay na ba? Somebody nga message me. She's already applying for COR right right now. Parang, that was about three hours ago. She was lining up. And then, who said sure? Okay. So, yeah, and I think what's nice about you, nga, so the I moved to this team is that um, Global Linker is really uh, one of the platforms and tools that really yung talagang that will help SMEs. And I've seen that in like what three months with just uh, working um, in this team, very inspiring. And I guess it, it's it's a very fulfilling job. <laughs> so yeah, I'm grateful to have met you, Mark, and um, to be with you today in this webinar and also thanks also to, us, um, to all the people here <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah i heard about the growth eh? i mean bo was telling me you know, especially during the time of the pandemic so a lot of people saw the value of the global linker uh platform uh, for their business so it's great that you, you guys have it and it's great that you're offering it for free so a lot of people who don't know who are here you know, go check it out but I will not preempt anything. I'm not also from Union Bank. This is just my background because uh, I'm sick of seeing my chair at the background. So <laughs> and I saw that I saw that you had a really nice design. It looks a bit like I'm in the beach and there's a sun <laughs> also. So I'm just pretending. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just pretending. But I'm just in my room. <laughs> <laughs> so the mom ba? The magdag ba ng Naging 12 ba tayo or 11? <laughs> Amuli attendees. How many is here? Kasi pag telepon. Sa ako, hindi 11. L.A. Benitez is also here. Wow. Oh, 
napausap ko kanina lang. Hello. Yep, we can hear you. Yeah. Ayan. So, yung mga magsi-CR break ha. CR break na now kasi magsa-start tayo in like two minutes. <laughs> yeah, and this is a very this is a very meaty discussion because I've seen I've seen it all. Ikaw ba yan, Tata? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I see your chat but we can't hear you. This is a different format. Yay. Someone said yay sa ano, sa chat. Ayan. Ayan, may nakita kang yay. <laughs> Yep. Pwede, pwede ka na mag... Uh, you can talk all you want, Tata. <laughs> we won't hear you. Don't worry. <laughs> Yan. Uy, Tata, remind everyone, yung mga kasama mo sa Lepa One to sign up to join us today. Sayang to. This is the most... For me, ah, this is the most important webinar that we're doing. Max, really? It's a, mat- it's, a, uh, it's a matter of life and death. Diba sabi nga nila, death and taxes. Diba magkasama? So it's a matter of life and death. So. Ayun na yung nagsabi. I think sabi niya, wait daw. Baka uh, nag-invite pa siya ng mga people. Kaya siya sa tito jokes ko. <laughs> Hi, Ramey. Welcome. Pinost ko rin to sa LEP kanina eh. Yeah, nakita ko nga eh. Thank you so much. Oo oh, nga Uh, pero baka last minute eh. So, I don't know if this is all. We can actually post the recorded session rin, right? In the, in the, in your group. Pwede uh, naman. Jahe yeah. lang. Kasi na, uh, <laughs> dito joke ako eh. Baka ma-judge na. Hahaha. Hirap na. Kaya nga, kaya nga tita joke. Kasi diba may group na titos and titas of Manila, diba? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Part dito of mark that, ako din eh. <laughs> You're also part of that. Yeah, okay. a part of that. All right, I guess we can start na, no? Yeah, Mark. let's start. So, some people yeah. pwede na lang humabol. Good yes. afternoon. Yeah, so good afternoon, everybody. Ako si Margabel Yusilio, sa mga, isa sa mga advocates ng Union Bank Global Linker. And we prepared something special para sa inyo today. And I, with me is, of course, kilala niyo na siya, ang founder ng Let's Eat Pare, na si Mark Del Rosario. Hi, Mark. Kanina pa tayo nag-uusap. But wow, I like oh, that. Okay. <laughs> segway, segway. Oh nga, before we start, because I've been part yeah. of this group um ever since um before, but I really, parang wala, I've just been, but I really don't know how it came about. So we're for those that really don't know how it all started, and maybe you can share a bit about that. Well, it all started with my love for food, though. I came from the industry. I've been in the industry, the food industry, uh, for that matter, for about 18 years na and counting. So it all started with that, with that passion, no. And I'm joined by our attendees who also have the same passion for food. So my passion took a different path. Uh, it started as in, uh, a brand manager, uh, a salesperson, but it evolved into a lot of things, no. Uh, I became a restaurant owner at one point in 20, 2012. And uh, so the final evolution, I don't think this is, The, the last stage, it's still evolving, was the platform. So the platform started in November 16 of 2016. So if you count back, that's four years already. So we celebrated our fourth birthday with a bang. <laughs> diba? And a few drinks and a few diba? uh, friends, but uh, the whole family was invited. So we were about 120 attendees. So ang saya. So in line with that, I mean... Uh, The platform also grew into something that uh, we used to really give back to the community. You know, it became a social advocacy, and with that, uh, to support that, we worked with a lot of uh, key key partners uh, in different industries. So, in the banking industry, of course, we have Union Bank. You no, know? this is, siguro, our third or fourth installment to our diba, very fruitful partnership, and I'm very thankful to Mo. To you guys, to JP, and to the whole team, no, for for uh, allocating some resources to us. So we all know that uh, if you look at the diba, statistics, uh, almost 90% percent of our uh, business, the business industry, is comprised of MSMEs. 
So we really want to help them professionalize themselves. So we really invest in these uh, webinars and these events. I teach also yeah. personally. Oh, okay. Uh, I do, um, what do you call this? I do meetups and we have uh, what we call learning sessions. I call it a learning pod where I teach anything under the sun and then I have a blackboard. So naputo lang yan because of the <laughs> pandemic. So, yeah. It's a really but, good match then, talaga. I mean, yes, yes. To, I mean, your advocacy diba, of helping SMEs. Um, and, and I guess that's why, siguro, um, Union Bank, Global Linker, and LEP, let's eat para community, we really create a great pair. Because yeah. that's both our goals to really help um, as many SMEs as we can. So, yun nga, Mark. Parang, parang um, wine and cheese yun eh. Totoo. I mean, that's why we're very pair. grateful, Ren, because you gave us also a, a spot during the Christmas party. So, uh, one of our advocates was able to share a bit about Global Linker. Um, but then, for those that don't are not familiar with it, actually, it's really to help um, MSMEs really grow and digitize the bus- their businesses. And right now, we have around 300,000 SME users globally. And 50,000 oh, wow. of them. Yeah. Oh, that's 50, a big number. And 50,000 of them actually nandito sa Pilipinas. And uh, we'll probably just show a quick video uh, to all our, uh, for our viewers today para they know lang more about uh, the platform and how it can help them. So there, we'll just, just a really quick video. Q in we'll, video. Q in. <laughs> <laughs> SMEs are the backbone of the Philippine economy. Union Bank has laid down the groundwork for creating an ecosystem helping businesses through an integrated user experience connecting key stakeholders in the ecosystem. The learning was steep. To pave way for these learnings, Union Bank started this with Eureka that started on October 18, 2015, the bank's corporate social responsibility project. The objective was to help brick and mortar business owners and turn them into brick and click business owners. In building that ecosystem, Union Bank Global Linker was born. It's an online platform with social networking capabilities that help SMEs manage and grow their businesses. Business namin kasi po mas marami po makakakilala ng product namin at mas makapalaba pa po yung kaalaman ko para mas mapalago yung business namin. Kasi po maraming... Global Linker helps build the community of SMEs and link them to the right market, suppliers, financiers, and advisors. This in return help in nation building by promoting economic growth. So there, that's... That's basically what Global Linker is in a nutshell. And um, they can, you actually, anybody can sign up and it's free. You all have, you just have to go to www.unionbank.globallinker.com. So guys, Libre Puyan, sign up is free. So before we start our, our, our the official or the, the, the official session for today, uh, we just have a few reminders to mga viewers natin, especially in this Zoom. Yes, this room, Zoom room. So, Please uh, mute all devices, so yung mga, yung mga cell phones nyo, and then please turn off your webcam. And then yung mga questions, so kung may mga, may mga questions kayo, feel free to type po sa uh, chat box here. And then the question and answer portion will take place after the talk. Tapos let's maintain a positive attitude and keep our minds open during this session. Also, let's refrain from using profanity and vulgar words from the comment section. So there are just a few reminders sa mga nanonood sa atin ngayon. So before we start, uh, I'd also like to call in our SME segment Vice President, Mr. JP Suleiman, to give a few words. Hi, Sir Japes. Good afternoon. Hi, magandang hapon, mga mare at pare. Yeah, I'm also a member of Let's Eat Pare. Good hapon sa inyo lahat. Salamat for being here uh, and, and uh, uh, wanting to learn is something that's very, very key. Lalong lalo na ngayon, uh, matatapos na rin ng taon. And there's a lot of things that a business owner, tayo-tayo sama-sama, would really have to pivot with and pivot on pagdating sa 2021. 
sakto-sakto. Uh, I, I just received before this webinar the report from Nielsen about the health of SMEs in the Philippines. And downer siya eh. Medyo downer na konti kasi GDP is down and so on. Pero may nag iisang color green charts nila. At yung nag iisang color, color green na yun was actually the food industry. And they were showing that there was a 20% increase versus April 2020 of household expenses being more towards food delivery services. Alam ko, nandun tayo sa space na yun. So let's eat pare. A lot of us are in the food industry. So it's very, very comforting that in that particular space, tumataas ang ekonomiya natin. But again, there are a lot of things that we have to do. Uh, we have to learn how to properly uh, account our sales. We have to properly reach the market. And that's why we are here. And uh, this is where I'm inviting everyone, please join us in Global Linker, because this is a platform, an advocacy platform that we have to really spearhead and, and assist you in that transformation. Kailangan nyo ba ng website para makapagbenta kayo online? Nasa loob. Kailangan nyo ba ng payment gateway para matanggap kayo ng payments? Nasa loob. All those things. Plus, on top of it, things like this. We do a lot of webinars. We do a lot of learnings, sessions, and even connect you to the right business advisors that you might need for whatever particular business stage you are in. So hindi ko na po papatagalin kasi medyo madaldal si Marga at medyo madami ring gustong sabihin si Mark. So I'll, maraming maraming salamat sa inyo lahat for being here and I hope to see you in Union Bank Global Linker. Magandang hapon sa lahat. Thank you, Sir James. Okay, that's kind of true. Okay, pero don't worry because I'll be introducing our speakers for today. Um, but before that pala, I'd like to invite everyone again to sign up. Libre po yung platform namin. So today, yung webinar na ito, na ito will be divided into two sessions. The first one, we will have basic tax compliance. And the second part, we will have the ways to efficiently file your taxes online. So let me introduce Paul, our first speaker. He has a decade of experience in accounting and the field of taxation and has gained extensive experience in providing tax, in providing tax compliance uh, and due diligence audit and tax outsourcing services to local and multinational companies. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you Mr. Richard Ibarra. Hello. Richard, Hi, Mark. Good afternoon. Hi, Mark. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And so, first, I, I, I am very happy that uh, we were invited again by Union Bank to be part of the webinar series. So, excited ako na. Uh, Naglalecture dito kasi one way, uh, it's, it's, it's more on sharing your, your knowledge or your experience para at least someone can um, grow when they do the business properly. So for this afternoon, um, uh, we will be discussing about the basic tax compliance of the online seller. So what are the things that we need to understand and somehow siguro at the end of the discussion there will be a a question and answer portion. So it's, it would be a good opportunity for us to, to have an answer dun sa mga tanong natin. So allow me to share my, my PowerPoint. Okay, so for my agenda, um, I'll be discussing two items. So first, uh, do an online seller really need to register with the PIR? And then if our answer is yes, and then what are the tax compliance, basic tax compliance requirement that an online seller must be able to, to understand? Okay, first question, uh, do an online seller really need to register with the PIR? Ang sagot natin, yes. Uh, it is very clear in the tax code and even in the PIR uh, regulation issued by the taxing authority. So under section 236 of the tax code, it's very clear that every person subject to internal revenue taxes shall be registered with the PIR. So ang ibig sabihin nito, kung ang isang tao is kumikita, 
because of the business activity and then uh, liable siya to pay tax and para makapagbayad siya ng tax, it is important for that person or for that business to register with the Bureau of Internal Revenue. In fact, ang aking tanong, uh, kung hindi ba nagka-pandemic, do you think na there would be a, a parang compelling reason for online sellers na mag-register with the BIR, di ba? Yun yung tanong, kung hindi naman nagka-pandemic, baka hindi sila i-compel. Well, sabi natin kanina, no, it's very clear on the tax code. Uh, the tax code is um, it's in 1997. It was enacted in 1997. And even early year by 2013, BIR already issued a revenue memorandum of circular 55-2013. Ano ibig sabihin na ito? So, binibigyan na ng reminders lahat ng mga online seller that they really have to register with the taxing authority. Now, so basically, na-address na natin ang yung first question. Do an online seller really need to register? Our answer is yes. Now, we move on on the basic requirements. Ano ba yung mga basic tax compliance requirements? So one is you have to register with the BIR. It's the number one. And then if you are registered with the BIR, all business establishment are required to maintain a, an, a books of account. So these books of account will serve your records, your accounting records. Sabi natin no, sa accounting, no, it is the art of recording a business transaction. As mentioned earlier by JP, no, na yung kailangan yung sales natin are really accounted. And one way to ensure dapat naka-record yan sa libro natin. Kasi at the end of the day, uh, that will be our basis. Parang report natin, no? report how do our business perform. Is it good or hindi siya ganun pa ganun kaganda? And then kung hindi pa siya ganun kaganda, with your accounting records, uh, it would help us. It would help us to strategize. What are the areas that we need to give focus? Uh, marketing ba? Or it's more of a control ng cost? So something na associated din yan dun sa accounting record. So so second, uh, online seller must be able to have a books of account. Later, we will further expound. Ano ba yung mga uh, method? It's not the method. It's more of what are the forms? What are the kinds of books of account that can be maintained by the online seller or a taxpayer. And then third, we need to act as an redoing agent. So, ito, no, uh, parang binigay sa'yo ng government isang additional work. If a taxpayer or an online seller failed to act as a redoing agent, meron siyang impact sa kanya. Mahirap magkamali sa tax eh, kasi um, if we talk about tax, na overlook ko or uh, hindi ko nabantayan yung deadline, uh, there is a corresponding financial penalty. Unlike sa accounting, if you commit an error, for us, an accountant, we always have an adjusting entries or correcting entries. You can always do an adjustment on the transaction. But for tax, uh, kailangan siguro ang, ang conscious natin, magkamali ako, meron kagad siya penalty. Um, just to give you a overview, ano ba yung penalty sa pinag-uusapan natin? Ito ang sakit, oh. kasi automatic, no? meron kang 25% surcharge, and then meron kang 12% interest, and then compromise penalty. Example, meron akong binayaran na rent. This is common, no? na some of the online seller are, are renting a warehouse or renting a, a space for their business or even occupying an, an, an office then. So they have to pay a rent. Um, as a withholding agent, required ka mag -withhold. Kung hindi ka nag-withhold, ano ibig sabihin ng hindi ka nag-withhold? Um, binayara mo ng buo yung lesser. Eh, sabi natin, di ba, withholding agent ka, sorry, you're required to withhold. Assuming na dapat nag-withhold ka ng 100 pesos. For failure of the taxpayer to withhold na 100, automatic papabayad sa'yo yung 100 plus 25% surcharge plus 12% interest. In effect, na parang lalabas, meron kang 137 na pabayaran. So, it is really very important na for for all of us, yan, online seller, to, to, to ensure na we can comply. Kasi at the end of the day, baka sayang naman yung pinagod natin, no? yung hard-earned money ng business, but just only be be going to payment of unnecessary expenses because of the penalties that we incurred when we do our business. So, importante yan. Eh? So, we need 
to act as a reloading agent kasi for failure to do uh, this role, uh, it would correspond to a certain penalties, which I mentioned, 25% surcharge, 12% interest, and compromise penalty. And then lastly, as an online seller, as a registered online seller with the Bureau of Internal Revenue, we are required to file the tax return. So filing of the tax return would happen on a monthly, on a quarterly, and on a yearly basis. Again, uh, this is mandated for us na mag-file ng tax return. No? Later siguro i-expound natin. Ano bang mga tax return yung kailangan kong i-file? Kasi for failure to file a tax return, again, we'll go back on the penalties. What are the penalties? 25% surcharge, 12% interest, and compromise penalty. So we want, yeah, we want, our goal is we want to do the business and at the same time, we are compliant. So we are, um, we are, uh, we are being uh, uh, refrained from paying unnecessary expenses. Sabi nga nila, di ba, tax is a cost and tax is an expense, which is true. So for us, a business uh, online, we want to ensure na tayo ay efficient. We are cost efficient and at the same time, compliant with the rules and regulation as imposed by the taxing authority. As mentioned, um, paano ba mag-register? So all you have to do is just go to the Revenue District Office and then uh, mag-a-apply ka. So ang question, ang office ko is uh, Makati. Ang business ng place ng bahay ko is Quezon City. And I'll be doing business in, let's say, uh, Taguig. Saan ako magpaparegister? Ang sagot natin, where is your official business is located? So you have to go to the RDO at Taguig. Not in Makati, not in Quezon City. Kasi it would have an impact if you registered your business in, in Quezon City or in Makati. Kasi somehow, um, where your registration would follow the submission of your tax return. So, kung magkamali tayo ng venue, no, uh, again, it might have a penalty or consequence of 25% surcharge because of out of venue. So, we really want to ensure na tama yung ating registration. So, ang, ang pinaka-goal natin, where your official business is located, dapat doon ka nakarehistro. Huwag kayong mag kasi um, doon naman sa BR, there are uh, dedicated personnel, BR personnel, who will assist us in the registration of our business. So you can look for the officer, officer of the day, or the client support specifically to assist us with the registration. BR issued a revenue memorandum circular 5720 detailing all of the documentary requirement. Merong good news. I mean good news. Um, if you will be registering with BIR, BIR already dispensed the mayor's permit. Tama? Wow, that's a good news. Kasi unlike before, one of the requirements is mayor permit. But in consonant with the ease of doing business, yan, yung sinasabi ni President Duterte, no, na mas dapat mas madali ang business sa Philippines. So BIR already dispensed the mayor's permit as one of the requirements for business registration at the BIR level. So, bakit ka ba nagpaparegister kay BIR? That's a good question. Uh, simply, uh, you have to obtain a tax identification number. And then second, you have to get a certificate of registration. These are, uh, this is BIR form 2303. Ito yung makikita nyo no, when you dine in or when you go to a particular establishment. These are visibly posted tama, sa kanilang areas or kanilang... Um, sa kanilang premise. So, it is important for us na ganyan din ang gagawin natin as an online seller kasi if there would be a tax map, yan, tax map, ano yung sabihin ng tax map? BR would check if the, the business are really compliant. So, one of their checklists is to look or to locate their BIR certificate of registration. So, it's important na makakuha tayo nito when we do the registration. And then second, yan, i-allow ka ni BIR to have a books of account. Anong reason kung bakit kailangan ng books of account? Simply because uh, we have to record all our business transactions. And then lastly, it is important to, to have an authority to print. What is this authority to print? Itong authority to print is a document that would give us, yan, that would give us na makapag-issue tayo ng sales invoice and official visit. Ulitin ko, 
for every establishment, yeah, there must be a sales invoice or official receipt. It is a mandatory when every time that there is a sales, we are required to issue a sales invoice or official receipt. Later, it distinguishes na then what is a sales invoice when do we use the official receipt. Now, ang common question, so proprietor ako, do I still need to get the T, the tax identification number? Kasi magkakaroon ako ng business. Yan. Magkakaroon ako, for example, ng um, uh, ano ba yung pinaka mas magandang ano? Delivery services. Yan. I'll be joining the wagon ng delivery services. So, I'm engaged. I'm an employee. You know? Currently, I'm an employee and just to augment my income, I'll des I decided to come up with a business. So, delivery. So, Ang question, magpapa-register ako? Yes, I have to. I have to. Yan. Next question, do I have to get a TIN, tax identification number? Wait, I am an employee, right? So if I'm an employee, I have my own tax identification number. So if I have a tax identification number, then there's no need for me to get a TIN to the BIR. Bawal magkaroon ng multiple TIN. I, I, I want to stress out, there is a criminal liability if a taxpayer possesses more than one tax identification number. So if I am a sole proprietor, I will be using my own team. When is the time that I'll be securing another team? If, for example, I started to put up a partnership or I started to put up a corporation. So that's the only exception that you have to apply a tax identification number. But if you are a sole proprietor, you can always use your tax identification number as an owner of that business. So we mentioned on uh, we have to maintain our books of account because these books of accounts will uh, show our sales transactions, uh, purchases transaction, what our cash disbursement, what our cash receipts, and other entries, related entries to our business. So dito natin siya i-record. So there are three types that, that the taxpayer or an online seller can choose on. So, kanina bawal mag-maintain more than one tin. No? On the same token, yeah, the business are also uh, barred to have more than one set of books of account. So meaning we have to maintain only one set of books of account. I think I do not need to expound the idea why, bakit kailangan isa lang yung books of account. So basically, there would only be one books of account. Now, as an online seller, you can identify whether you can use a manual book. So you manual books, these are the ledger, these are the journal journal uh, journal books. So ito yung parang susulatan mo talaga. Hindi siya parang susulatan mo talaga siya ng manually. And meron ding loose leaf. Pag sinabi naman natin loose leaf, the taxpayer developed his or her accounting records. Yeah, so it can be an Excel, an Excel file, or kung magaling ka mag-program, you can develop your own recording system. And I think hindi naman siya bawal. Or kung may budget kayo, and may budget kayo, you can buy a computerized accounting books. So kasi ang advantage ng CES, Kung sobrang dami na ng transaction, it, it's more efficient na yung recording ng transaction is being done by the system rather than manually mo siya isusulat. So again, um, there are three types of books. We have the manual, and then second is the loose leaf, and then third is the computerized accounting system. These books must be registered with the BIR. So prior to its use, again, uh, prior to its use, it must be registered with the BIR. Kasi if I'm using a computerized accounting system, hindi siya approved ni BIR, there is already a penalty. Kung magamit ako ng loose leaf, hindi siya approved ni BIR, again, there would be a corresponding penalty. We have also to consider the, na meron din submission kay BIR if the online seller decided to use a loose leaf or a computerized accounting system. So, if the taxpayer or online seller opted to use a computerized accounting system 30 days from the close of the taxable year. And ibig sabihin ng 12 taxable year. Ibig sabihin ng taxable year. Ibig sabihin ng taxable year. For accounting, there are 12 months period. So assuming we are a calendar period. Pag sinabi natin calendar period, yung ika-12 months natin falls on December 31. So for accounting, 
for tax reporting, you always report our transaction on a yearly basis. Meaning ng yearly basis, it will cover 12-month period. So if a taxpayer is a calendar period, a calendar year, yan, or taxable year, December 31, uh, we are mandated to submit our computerized copy, a, com a copy of our computerized books of account to the BAR within 30 days after the close of the taxable year. If you're using a loose leaf, there is a requirement for us to submit 15 days after the close of the taxable year. But if the election of the online seller is using a manual books of account, there is no requirement. So the only time the pupunta ulit tayo kay BAR is kung kukuha na tayo kasi mauubos na ang dynamic counter mauubos na yung books of account. So we just have to be cautious on the requirement and submission of the books of account. Ito pagkakatandaan ng ng online seller kasi there is a retention period. BAR imposed a 10 year that all of our accounting records, all our tax return must be kept. Yan. Kasi kapag sinunog mo na siya or tinapon mo na siya after five years, magkakaroon tayo ng issue. So we have to be mindful that all our accounting records and even tax returns and even the invoices that we pay to our suppliers must be kept for a period of 10 years. Kasi kapag nagkaroon ng audit, yan. Kasi usually, uh, ito yung nagiging problema ng ibang taxpayer na sana hindi natin maging problema in the future. PR conduct an audit. They are challenging the, the taxpayer to present the proof na talagang merong supporting documents eh hindi ma-provide ng, ng, ng taxpayer. What happened? So, they have no choice but to pay the assessment of the taxing authority. And no reason, they were not able to provide the document. So again, we have to keep our records for 10 years. And then, kailangan ba na yung aking records or aking financial statement? So that is your report, no? That is your report, the performance of your business. Kailangan ba certified siya na na isang CPA, do I hire, do I need to hire a certified public accountant to, to attest my records or to sign for my FS? Ang rule, with the Revenue revenue uh, revenue Memorandum Circular 2914, if your gross receipts or earning for a year exceed 3 million, yan, 3 million na, ayan threshold, 3 million, and then you are required to get a CPA. So kung wala pang 3 million and then uh, there is no need for us to hire a CPA. So ano ba ginagawa ng CPA? Kasi ang CPA siya yung nag-audit uh, na tama yung nireport nating sales, tama yung nireport nating expenses. So the, basically that's the role of our CPA to give credence with our records. Kaya they sign, right? But if your sales is not Exceeding, ayan. At the moment na, kasi you started your business. So, siguro ang, ang, ang business mo pa lang, you started last year, ayan. Or you started this year after the, ano, no, after the lifting of the quarantine. Or, so, you, you saw an opportunity so ngayon ka nag-business. So, hindi siya one year. But again, sabi natin, no, you have to report the transaction on a yearly basis. So, every December, magkakaroon tayo ng closing of books, tama? So, magkakaroon tayo ng cut-off. So kung yung sales mo for let's say for 5 months or for 6 months did not reach 3 million and then there is no requirement for us to hire a CPA. Kanina no, sabi natin when we do the registration at the PR, one of the expected output is to have an authority to print or ATP. This authority to print would give um a message na pwede na tayo mag-issue ng sales invoice, pwede na tayo mag-issue ng OR kasi pag nagpagawa ka ng OR sa printer, basically they would look or they would ask this ATP. Kasi itong ATP na to, ilalagay yan saan? Sa invoice mo or sa OR. Pansin niyo yung mga S, mga sales invoice na meron kayo or official receipt na meron kayo. Ano nakikita niyo sa bandang baba? Di ba meron siyang authority to print? Ano ibig sabihin ng authority to print? Na yung OR or yung invoice is registered with the 
taxing authority. Kasi may implication yan kapag halimbawa, meron kang expenses, tama na? Meron kang expenses tapos hindi siya registered kay BAR. Paano yun mo nalaman na hindi siya naka-registered kay BAR? Kasi walang ATP or authority to pay. What would be the consequence? Iti disallow lang naman yung expense. BIR would not honor yung input tax. So, kaya napaka-importante na yung ating dokumento, invoice and or are, are registered with the tax, with the taxing authority. Otherwise, uh, if your customer uses these documents as a support of their expense, pagdating ng audit, it would be disallowed. They would not honor this unregistered sales invoice or official receipt. We have to consider as well na Kanina, no, may 10-year period no, that to maintain your accounting records. Dito naman, may validity rin yung ATP. Ibig sabihin, um, the taxing authority would only provide at least 5 years tama? na pwede mong gamitin yung OR at saka SI. So, babantayan nyo rin kasi baka mamaya paso na or, press or expired na yung SI no? or expired na yung uh, invoices. So there would also be penalty if you're issuing an expired SI or official receipt. Sa part mo, as a seller, meron kang administrative penalty. Sa part naman ng customer, sa part naman ng customer mo, again, they, if there is a possibility na madidisallow yung kanilang expense. And we do the, when we do the business, isa lang ang goal natin. We want to grow not only ourselves, but even our business partner. So we have to be uh, be mindful na we have to protect them as well. Kasi nga, they are, giving an, they are giving business to us, so it is also proper na we provide them the documents na na hindi naman sila mapapahama pag nag, nagkaroon ng BIR audit. Now, we have to distinguish when do we issue invoice and then when do we issue official receipt. If you are engaged in sale of goods, Bibigyan ka lang ni BIR ng sales invoice. Don't expect that BIR would be issuing an official receipt. Ulitin ko ang premise ko ha. If you are engaged in sale of goods, your primary documents, primary documents would be an invoice. Hindi ka bibigyan ni BIR ng official receipt. Bibigyan ka lang ng official receipt kapag ikaw ay engaged sa sale of service. So meaning, if you are engaged in sale of service, like for me, no delivery. So engaged ako sa delivery, so service. So basically, my primary documents would be an official receipt. Magkakaroon ba ako ng invoice? Ang sagot natin, hindi. Why? Kasi the sales invoice only pertains to goods transaction. And an official receipt is a, a, a proof of transaction for services. So we have to consider. Uh, ito yung sinasabi natin no, yung BIR 2303. So after you registered at nalaman mo, ayan, paano yung malalaman mo kung successful ka na, uh, you may find na meron ka certificate of registration. So this would be your final output. So nandito nakalagay yung name mo, yung tax identification number mo, and then yung mga tax returns na dapat i-file. Doon sa tax return na info file, remember, sabi natin kanina, you are a withholding agent, right? So, we have to follow whatever tax return that has been uh, registered or enrolled in your certificate of registration. We should be uh, religiously observe the filing of those tax returns. So normally, as a withholding agent, and ito yung mga possible na pwedeng ibigay sa inyo. If you are hiring an employee, yan, so basically you will have a withholding tax on compensation. So kung meron kang payment sa mga contractors or payment sa mga professionals or payment sa consultant, uh, you may expect na expanded withholding tax would be among your tax return to be enrolled. Yeah, tax return enrolled on your 2303. So, so, to, so to summarize, yeah, to summarize, yeah, it is very important for the online sector or every taxpayer to register with the BIR. For what reason? One, kailangan mo makakuha ng BIR registration 2303. And then, dapat magkaroon ka rin ng ano, no, ng ad for BIR receipt kasi basically uh, the establishment must be able to issue a sales invoice or official receipt. And then, bibigyan ka ng books of account. Ayan, ito yung books of account. 
So, ang pagkita natin kanina, no? uh, the taxpayer can be a manual books, can observe a manual books, or a computerized accounting system, or a, loose, a developed system by the company. So, we just have to take note of the deadline for submission. And then, siguro, as, as, a, as a final word, yan, sabi natin kanina, no? meron tayong tax return. So, we have to file our tax return. So, how to file our tax return? It can be a manual. Yan. So, ang ibig sabihin ng manual, you have to go to the bank, you have to go to the uh, BIR offices just to file the tax return. Or, uh, some taxpayer uh, can avail of the BIR facilities, yung electronic filing payment system. I think some of you have heard this, yung EFTS. So, if the taxpayer or the online seller opted to uh, avail of the EFTS filer, yan. So, hindi mo na kailangan pumila sa banko or pumunta sa PIR kasi ang filing ng return can be done at the convenience of your office or sa bahay or dun sa tindahan nyo as long that you can have an internet access para at least ma-access yung BIR portal ng EFTS. So when to file, doon sa certificate of registration nyo, nandun na din kung kailan nyo ipo-file. But basically, we have the filing of monthly, quarterly, and annual. So what to file? So based doon sa, sa certificate of registration. So basically, that would be the um, end of my presentation. And then later, siguro, we will be joining the question and answer portion. So I'm now turning the proceeding again to Marga. So thanks for that, Richard. Thanks for that insightful talk. So babalikan ka namin later yes. for the question and answer portion. Okay. So we'll proceed to the next, um, the next topic for this webinar. He has more than 17 years of experience in the IT industry in the fields of project management and application management and support. He is a certified PMI project management professional, an EXIN certified ITIL V3 expert, wow, <laughs> a SAP FI certified solution consultant. He is also a speaker for topics related to entrepreneurship, starting a business, project management, and the like and is a consultant and mentor to various MSMEs and businesses. Currently, he is the CEO of Taxumo, a Filipino fintech startup that automate, automates tax compliance. Ladies and gentlemen, let's all welcome Mr. EJ Arboleda. Good afternoon, EJ. Hi, good afternoon, Marga. And thank you, Union Bank and Let's Eat Pare for having us, no, for inviting us to this session. Um, just to echo, I think what what Mark said a while ago. Na you know, this is uh, it's great that you guys are actually spending time learning about your business, how to improve your business, how to do it properly. Um, so you know, I think that's like that's a great indication that you are going to uh, be successful in your endeavor. No, so bigyan natin ng uh, ang ating mga sarili ng uh, palakpakan. No, so good job, guys. You're here. All right. So. Um, I guess I'll just go on. I hope you can see my screen. Uh, but right now, uh, what I'm going to be talking about is like how, you know, uh, Richard uh, shared a while ago, like uh, the basics of tax compliance. Now I'm going to talk about how can you do all that with technology, all right? And what are like the things that you should look at uh, when considering solutions? Uh, but before that, I wanted to introduce who we are. Um, so I wanted to introduce Taksumo. So Taksumo is actually a social enterprise. It's a social tech enterprise. Um, we are after the uh, we are after achieving two UNDP sustainability goals. The first one is decent work and economic growth. Meaning, uh, the, the, the key point for this particular sustainability goal is that everyone has decent opportunities. Uh, to work, you know, uh, to work and earn for their, for themselves and their families. Um, we believe that by helping MSMEs with one of the most painful parts of their business, which is taxes, if we help them with that and make it easy for them, then they would be able to create opportunities for the rest of the Philippines, no? And that is what you guys are doing. That is what um, all of you are, 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 are doing with the, uh, with, with the food businesses that you have started and you are now cultivate, cultivating, um, they're not just that. They don't just end there. Ideally, you know, eventually you also are able to employ more people. The end state that we want to go for, you know, in Taksumo is that eventually the badge of success for a Filipino will no longer be that you traveled abroad to do work. 
it will be, you know, it, all of those opportunities will be available locally. And that is possible only with the growth of our MSMEs, and that includes you. The next flip side, no, the, the, the next half of our mission is industry innovation and infrastructure. Basically, we want to use technology and innovation to provide government services. We want to push technology and innovation for the government to provide better services for us because we deserve it, to be honest. No? Um, now that you know you are here, you want to learn about how to pay taxes, you deserve better services. And this is where we also come in. We work with government agencies so you, so you can avail of those better services. Now, before I go on, uh, to discuss uh, about technology and compliance. The first question that we were talking about, Kanina and Mark, no, was that I, I think your program, or you know, there's a certain level of progression that um, that the Let's Eat Pare members um, go through. No, first it's sort of like a, an incubation wherein you test the idea, you test the product, if it's something that will fly, and then afterwards, if it's something that will really, you know, uh, become. A, uh, a good source of revenue for you, then you go legit. No, so that's the first question we ask ourselves. No, as as business owners, why would I want to go legit when you know a lot of these payments happen, naman, uh, without any record of transaction? So, bakit ako maglegitimize when I can like keep this under the radar, right? So that's a that's a question that we always get. Now, the answer to that is, of course, aside from your duty and all of that, the answer to that is number one, you want to get bigger clients. And for you to get bigger clients, you have to prove to those clients that you are not a fly-by-night uh, business, basically, and that you are able to provide the documentation that they would need, as Richard said a while ago, um, to, to uh, document their expenses as well so that they could justify their expenses. If you want to go after bigger clients, you want to service those bigger clients, normally those are, of course, bigger deals being registered is a minimum next you also want to use your registration as um because it's needed for leverage what does that mean when you want to get loans if you have a good financial history a comprehensive financial history and that is mainly shown by your tax returns if you can show that you have that then you would be able to get loans from financial institutions from official financial institutions like banks like union bank for example you have to provide those documents because they will assess they will use this to assess your risk if they see that you are you know you're paying your taxes regularly this is your income as reported this is like your cash flow that will allow them now to determine okay this is a business that we can loan to if you do not have that financial history what happens you can loan but you will have to loan from Loan sharks, yung mga five, six, very usurious loans, no? very scary. Um, so if you want to get from, um, from institutions talaga, then you have, then uh, being registered and filing your taxes is a good way of making sure you have the financial history to get from those institutions. Next, of course, medyo na uso ngayon dahil sa COVID, but government programs. The government has a lot of programs for small businesses. In fairness to the government, um, like the last one, yung pinakamaingi, was the Small Business Wage Subsidy Program, wherein they gave, you know, uh, a certain amount for, uh, for your employees that you are not able to pay um, during a certain part of the pandemic. Now, the government can't just give this out to everyone. What's their basis for this? Their basis to give out those these kinds of programs, these especially loans. They have loans that are coming out which are super baba ng rates, guys. Uh, but you know, um, the way that they can verify, how, you know, who to give out these loans to is if those businesses are registered. If you're not registered, you cannot avail of these programs. All right. And the last reason is you want to avoid tax penalties. We have helped a lot of people, a lot of um, customers who approach us and tell us, hey, hindi ako registered, pero for some reason, nalaman ng BIR na may kinikita ako. <clears throat> and now they have to pay penalties. Okay? That's like, that's, that's, the, that's the best case scenario if that happens. Because the worst case scenario is Oplan Candado. They will close your business. Okay? Um, and you want to make sure na unahan nyo yun. How does the BIR find out about these things? In their last annual party, so they invite us when they have parties. <laughs> so in their last party, 
they told us that they are very proud of their data analytics department. They're growing a data analytics department and they're using the results of that data analytics to determine who are the people that should be registered but aren't. You know, um, there is a reason why people who are registered provide a lot of documentation because the BAR does use that to go after those who are not registered and they're beefing up their data analytics. So you want to make sure that unahan niya to. Um, uh, you want to make sure that this doesn't happen to you because this will kill your business. We know a lot of people then who just decided, never mind, this is not worth the pain because they were just, you know, all of their money was basically just going to penalties, which when you think about it, yeah, that's not worth it, diba? Right? So avoid that. If you want to make sure that you are running a business that will go, you know, um, go far, a business that will be there for the long term, then you have to make sure that you are complying with uh, the government uh, uh, requirements, especially in particular taxation. No? Um, now, when it comes to uh, choosing you know, services that could provide that work for you, always remember that you can outsource the work. But at the end of the day, you cannot outsource the risk. What does that mean? If there is any mistake in the filing or if there's any incorrect anything, the people who are liable are not the service providers. No? It's not going to be your, the CPA you hired. The, people, the person who is liable is going to be you. So remember that. No? So my recommendation, if you want to go into business, understand taxes. Because that is, you know, because that is not a blind spot that you want to have. All right, so you want to make sure you understand at least the basics of it, which is why I said that it's a mark that you are going to be successful, that you're here because you are here in the possibly the most boring, the most painful part of having a food business, which is the tax part. No? So kudos. No? Um, now, now, when it comes to um, tech for compliance, what are the things that you should look at or consider? So first of all, um, these are the problems that tech in particular can address for you. Number one, there's a lot of effort or time required when you're, you know, when you have to go through that compliance process. According to this uh, study released by PwC, uh, the average business spends 198 hours every year on tax compliance. So that's basically around two days every month. You know? And if you, if, if you know, I'm sure you know this because you are business owners yourselves. That two days is a long time. That's a lot of work that you could have done, but instead you are basically working for the BIR. You know, tech can solve that because you can reduce the time that you spend. Next, real-time feedback is not there, you no, know, in a lot of like solutions that are available. On the contrary, if it's technology, normally you can pro uh, you can get real-time feedback. What does that mean? Um, in Taxumo, in particular, for example, whenever you enter income and expense, in real time we show you how much the estimated tax due is. So you always know how much you have to set aside. Hindi ka nagugulat. Next problem, transparency and control. Now, this is important as because I said a while ago that you know um, you cannot outsource the risk. Uh, how tech solves that is that your records are consolidated in whatever system you know, that you're using. You see the status and the results of all your filing and remittances. They're all there. And as long as they're all there, you know you are assured that it's, 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 it, has, it has been filed. So there's transparency in the sense that you no longer have to call up someone and ask them, hey, email mo sa akin yung, uh, yung na-file mo. Wala nang ganon. Because everything is there. No? Everything is on the system. Number two, correctness. i uh, sorry, next step, uh, next point, correctness. No? How tech solves that is that the standardized workflows that we have are aligned with the BIR. And that means that you're confident that the work and the filings are being done correctly. Okay? Um, and lastly, keeping up with the changes. If you have tried to file taxes by yourself, chances are there was a time when you were using a form that was already out of date. May bago na, fal may bago na palang form. That happens a lot because there are a lot of um, sources of change for BIR revenue regulations. No, The, the, um, uh, the legislative branch can can institute changes that will, you know, that will prompt changes to whatever forms are being filed or whatever process is being done, the executive branch as well, the judicial. So there are a lot of places where all of this um, can change. And part of the work in tax compliance is making sure you're up to date with all of that. If you're a business owner, that's the, that's like, you know, 
your your work shouldn't be taxes basically no? so so essentially uh, by using tech uh, we can easily basically update the forms the processes etc on the back end and the changes are automatically applied to you so we're just doing the same thing over and over again except that you know the filings are correct and up to date like it all right um, and that's it. No, that's that's how you. Uh, that's that's. Those are my recommendations in terms of like how and why you know you want to consider technology also as a solution for you. Now, how Taksumo works, I want to go into that. And I think the 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 big thing about uh, or not the big thing, but rather the important thing to note is that Taksumo is an accredited electronic tax service provider. All right. What that means is that we are accredited by the BIR. The filings that go through us are recognized by the BIR. The payments that are coursed through us are also remitted through AABs, primarily Union Bank. No, so that's 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 our partner in terms of remitting your payments to the BIR. Now, how Taksumo works and how we make it easy for people is number one, it works on any browser, on any device. You can use it on your desktop or on your phone. And then as a user, you just enter your income and expenses. As I said, in real time, your tax dues are calculated. So we avoid what we, what we coin tax bill shock. No? Um, you always know how much you have to set aside, essentially. And, of course, the forms are automatically filled out, and you can submit those forms directly to uh, the BAR. Aside from that, the attachments needed. So remember... Uh, you know, a lot of people may not know this, but when you are filing your forms, sometimes there are certain forms that will require attachments. Those attachments are automatically created by Taksumo also and are submitted to the BIR. You can also pay online through Taksumo through whatever payment channel works best for you. And that, of course, includes Union Bank. So what that means is you no, you no longer have to go to the specific branch assigned to your RDO. Because that was the process before. You had to go to a branch, not just not just any bank, no, but a specific branch accredited by your RDO. We democratize all of that. We remove that. We remove that geographic restriction. Most of our users, you know, they can pay wherever they are, in the beach, at midnight, whatever. Okay. We also have online and digital books of accounts. Now, as Richard said a while ago, there are two ways of using this particular books of accounts. You can copy this into your books. They're formatted in a way that's easy for you to copy na lang. Or you can register these books as your loose leaf books of accounts. So at the end of the year, that's 15th, no? January 15, uh, for your calendar year, you just print out these, uh, these reports, have them hardbound, and submit them to your uh, RDO. And that's it. No? You no longer have to write everything down. Everything is also on the platform. If you need the guidance of a CPA, we also have some features that will help with that. But first of all, Taksumo also helps you optimize your tax uh, costs. No, um, the, the more data you enter in Taksumo, the more robust its recommendation will be. So it will tell you, hey, uh, do this instead, do this instead, and this will help save on taxes. So there are, uh, Taksumo does things like that. Um, we do have a lot of users as well who work with accountants and they use Taksumo with their accountants. Um, so what they do is they delegate access to their accountant. And why that's important for them is because they want to make sure that the filings are being done. A lot of them nasunog na before, biglang nawala. For example, yung provider nila. So what happens now is that they want to make sure that everything's there. And, you know, by having a third party, essentially in this case, Taksumo, uh, act as, you know, of the how to file, then that's what they use to, to file their taxes. If you don't have an accountant, you can also choose from our vetted CPA partners. So we have worked with these people. They are very reliable. Uh, if you want to ask any question, you don't need a commitment yet, then you can also book some time with them and they can answer your question in more detail. If at any time you have questions using Taksumo, we, are, uh, we have customer service representatives who are on call from 9 a.m. to 12 midnight. And they also provide free weekly online onboarding calls on how to use the platform. So if you're not, if you're confused about how to use it, then, you know, just join one of those sessions and then it, it, you can see whether it's a solution that works for you. Other services that we, we provide, um, we also help with business registration. Right now we do it in Metro Manila, Tarlac and South Luzon. So regardless of what type of entity you are, we can help you with your registration. 
And you can also pay your SSS and pag-ibig through us. So as I said a while ago, we have a mission to like improve government services for the BIR. The BIR is like voted as the least trusted government agency. We started with that because that was proof for us that if we are able to make change there, then that means we can also do change elsewhere. No? And we've started doing that in SSS and pag-ibig. PhilHealth, there were discussions happening and then their whole issue happened. So that's something that we want to pick up soon again. No? Ideally, uh, we have that eventually as well. Now, this is something that is a reality for a lot of um, businesses currently in the pandemic because we have noticed that 70% of um, our users on the platform reported decreased income. That's a lot of people. And 30% reported that they did not have any income at all. You know, for those people, unfortunately, if you don't close your business, for those people, you will still have to keep filing. You know what Richard said a while ago about the compromise fee? If you fail to file a zero tax, meaning wala kang due, zero, if you fail to file that tax, uh, that tax form, you are liable to pay 1,000 pesos agad per form. Okay? And that's so annoying because wala ka nang kita, magbabayad ka pa ng penalty. Now, what we did was we created this service called Taxumo Lifeline. Essentially, you just turn it on, tick whatever forms you have to file, whatever tax types are on that certificate of registration that you have. Just choose all of that. And then automatically, Taxumo will file for you. Now, you can do this yourself also, but as I said, one of the challenges of doing tax compliance is you have to make sure that you're up to date. And I'm sure the website of the BIR is like the last website you want to uh, visit. No? So what happens is that kami on the back end, everything's updated. So you're assured that it's always going to be um, a timely uh, filing using the proper and updated procedures. So uh, that's it for me. Uh, if, if you want, you can sign up for free. Taxumo is free sign up. So uh, you can join the, uh, the 33,000 other Filipino taxpayers who are using us, uh, just visit us at taxumo.com. And by the way, as a special treat for um, Let's Eat Pare members, and since it's Thanksgiving, we have a Black Friday sale. Um, so just check out our website, check out our social media. It's very cheap. Just to give you a hint, it's like basically peso per month, guys. So just check it out because you know, we want to help you guys. This is a hard time and this is a way for us to help you. So go to our website and hopefully that helps you. Yeah, that's it. So I think we'll now go into the Q&A and thank you everyone for your time. Thank you, EJ. Mark, are you there? there. Yes, thank you, EJ. Wow, galing. Thank you. And Richard Ren, yeah. Uh, let's dive into the Q&A, no? Uh, we have a couple of questions here. I also have my own personal questions. I actually watched this session uh, a few weeks ago, but uh, every time you see it, you pick up something new and you have a new question you want to <laughs> ask. Eh? So let's let's go right at it. Mm -hmm. I have two questions here for Richard first. Uh, first is from Fides. Uh, for the sale of goods, I use collection receipt. Do I need to issue sales invoice too? So, Richard, are you there? So, if you're a sale of goods, yeah, sale of goods, sabi natin kanina, you're required to issue a uh, sales invoice. So, we only use a collection receipt kapag halimbawa yung transaction is a sales and credit kasi, di ba, may 30 days eh. So, the time that you delivered the goods to your customer, basically, you are required to issue the sales invoice. So, as an evidence of the payment, 30 days after the delivery, you'd, you'd be issuing a collection receipt as a, as a support na payment has been done on the transaction. So going to her question, yes, there is a requirement for us to issue a sales invoice. I have a question, no? and uh, this was a question of mine when I was still young, no? but I know the answer now. <laughs> the si National Bookstore has yung mga booklets na sales invoice that they print that you can buy off the yes. shelf. Recognized yeah. ben as an official sales invoice? Hindi eh. Pagdating ni BIR audit, hindi eh. So, there is a risk na hindi disallow ni BIR yan. Pero why does National Bookstore offer it? Yan yung question ko. Kung alam nilang... Um, sige. Bawal. Sige. Mm -hmm. uh, if we go kasi on the provision of the tax code, uh, yes. sabi sa tax code, any expenses na 
any expenses that would be incurred by the business can be supported by any corroborating documents. So, pag sinabi natin corroborating documents, it can be a contract, it can be a voucher, or even yung ano na bibili sa national bookstore. So, basically, yun okay. yung premise. But, uh, when BIR issued a parang revenue regulation, they become more strict. Yeah, they become more strict. So, sabi nila, all business establishments, sabi nga kanina ni AJ, no, we want to to ano uh, to transact with a legitimate business. Yan. Kasi, kasi yung mga mga SIOOR na nabibili sa National Bookstore or sa Moraita, yan. It can be a source, yan. It can be a source of a tax leakage sa government. Eh. Ano, bakit? Kasi they can, ano, they can under-declare, tama? Kasi there's no way for the BIR to identify. Ito bang lahat ng isyong SI is nireport talaga ni, ni, ni seller. Kaya nga pinaparegister ni BIR kasi gusto niya lahat ma-account, tama? So if we will Correct. just simply use yung national bookstore or some writer, uh, there is a basis for us to argue na valid yung support. But again, uh, aakit ka sa court. You have to raise your case to the court. And we do not want to go to the court. Wow. So yeah. ang, ang nakakalungkot ah, sa sometimes we are always at the mercy of the BR. So better siguro we just comply. And besides, ang, ang rational naman nung nung spirit na ginawa ni PIR kasi ayaw nila na magkaroon ng tax leakage kasi the more the more documents na unregistered there is a possibility that there can be a under declaration of revenue by the taxpayer yeah all right and if Thank i you. could and if i could siguro mark uh, just to add to what yeah. richard said the, when you go to the rdos they actually have their own receipts that you can use but I think you can use them for like 15 to 30 days only. Parang ganun after your registration. Yeah, after that, kailangan. Oo, yung temporary. They, they issue a temporary booklet. Eh, mm -hmm. Receipts. Pero may limit yun. Ah. Magagamit mo lang siya, as I said, 15 to... I'm not exactly sure right now, pero like 15 right, days after, right. yun lang. After nun, kailangan na yung official book, uh, yung official booklets, as Richard said. Yeah. For everyone's appreciation, Ren, I attended a bazaar before. No, This is on Rockwell pa. So the first day, uh, it was kind of quiet, no? But on the second day, may dumaan na tiga RDO from Makati <laughs> na paginitan yung bazaar. So everyone was required to have that booklet. So everyone had to pay for it. Mura lang naman, parang we paid like 350 for the booklet. Pero, di ba, pag uh, pinaginitan ka talaga ng BIR, di ba? <laughs> Mahirap eh. We don't want that to happen. So we really want to avoid that situation. Okay, we have a second question here. Pero anonymous eh. Medyo nahiya yata. Mahaba kasi yung question eh. <laughs> if a business is already registered under DTI but has not yet registered to BIR and started business operating during the pandemic, are there fines that the business owner will be paying upon registration to BIR? Oh, kasi ano eh, uh, separate yung agency ng DTI and then yung BIR. So basically, if the taxpayer failed to proceed with the registration kay BIR, there would be some penalty. Kaya naglabas dati si BIR ng isang issue once, no? Na sinasabi niya, o oh, sige yung mga na late, huwag na kayo matakot kasi there will be no penalty. Just pay the corresponding basic tax. So, to further address yung issue, as early as now, better na siguro na magparegister para at least hindi na masyadong lumala yung problema. Mm -hmm. I think the limit is 30 days. After the DTI, kailangan mag-register ka na in 30 days to both the BIR and the LGU. Mm -hmm. um, because may penalties siya. Tapos, just, just to add to what Richard said, what's interesting is that si BIR, they released that memo saying, online sellers have to be registered. Diba? And people were annoyed because they said, oh, loko tong BIR, ah. pandemic na nga, online sellers have to be registered. Pa. But you know what that memo actually contained? That memo actually said that what you are exempted from penalties if you register. That's what that memo said. It was just bad PR all around. But but you know there is there, there is the man consideration. Uh, the yeah. mis misunderstanding. Yes. Oh. We took a defensive stance. Yeah. Mark, <laughs> we actually yes. have a question for Taksumo. Can Taksumo okay. now facilitate BIR registration? Um. Yes, we can in the areas that I mentioned: Metro Manila, Tarlac 
and um, South Luzon. And we mainly do it through partner CPAs. So what will happen is we'll endorse you to CPAs that we trust, completely vetted namin, and then, you know, you work it out with them. Okay. I, I have then, two questions. Uh, sorry, go, sorry. Ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Go no, ahead. It's okay. Go ahead. Are you sure? Okay. I have yeah. two questions, Rin, no? Mm. So this is a matter of importance Rin, for our uh, online sellers. Eh? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, no? If your gross receipts per calendar year is not above 250000 you are not obligated to pay any tax. Tama ba? Ah. Correct. Actually, I think it's tricky because there are different types of taxes. You are if if you're above two uh, if you're below two fifty, you don't have to pay income. Yes, tax. but Any. there are oh. different types of taxes like percentage tax. If you're non-vat, yung non-vat na tax mo percentage three percent yan regardless of how much. Oh, so meron okay. parin yan. So yung like, meron pa rin. I think what you're coming from is the DTI sabi nila pag two fifty wag kayo mag-register na lagot yung DTI don sa BIR. Because because the DT, because the BIR said, eh, paano yung ibang types of taxes? Hindi nyo kasi gets yun. So, ingat kayo, yun. guys. Though, when it comes to taxes, just listen to the BIR. Don't listen to DTI because at the end of the day, pwede nyo bang sabihin sa auditor na, eh, sabi ng DTI eh. Hindi doon ko sa DTI magbayad ng tax. Diba? Oh, yun yung challenge. Oh, yeah. So, that's a challenge. No? So, the interagency communication, sometimes nagkakaroon ng diba? lapses. Yeah. Eh. And the oh, interpretation oh. of the public, <laughs> diba? it's important. So, it's good to have these forums. Eh. Yes. Second question, because I'm also part of the Influencer and Creator Council of the Philippines. No, As we know, uh, vlogging, mm. influencing diba, is becoming a popular profession. Okay, I'm kind of part of uh, that space right now. No, So what is the best way to register? I registered myself as a professional sole mm. prop. Yes. So having said that, I don't need a DTI permit, but I issue... Uh, receipts no with clients that I consult with. So is this the best? Did my accountant give me the best uh, setup or should it be? Because there's another option is one person corporation, diba? all of these other. Diba? What, what yeah. are your thoughts there, guys? Because uh -oh. there are a lot of questions in the space. no. So I talk to a lot yeah. of influencers and we try to give them advice on what's the best approach. For me, I think you did the right thing. Professional is the easiest and the best if okay. you're providing services. Okay. When you start providing goods, yan na yun, kailangan. We recommend mag sole prop ka na kasi may, meron ng health permit, mga ganyan. So it makes sense Correct. na sole prop. Uh -oh. uh, but you're right. If you register as a professional, you don't have, you don't need DTI, you don't need LGU. BIR lang siya. That is the same registration mm. that doctors get and lawyers yes. get. So and they, my, my accountant said DJs use it, yeah. <laughs> professional artista, models, yeah. oh, artista. Yeah. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Di naman tayo artista pero <laughs> so so th that's the right thing. I don't have any employees. I don't even own the platform. So that's the best approach. No, thank you. Easiest. Okay. Uh, we have more questions. Actually, very interesting. Let me open it. How do you ensure EJ? So this is for Taksumo. That your customer data is kept. So I think privacy, mm. no? Because yes. takot sila baka expose. Yes, oh, oh. So first of all, um, the data is uh, in so you know, we follow the best practices in terms of security. Uh, we mm. partnered with Microsoft for that, no. Um, so Ooh, nice. um, the your data is encrypted at rest, your data, meaning if it's like stored there, data is encrypted, your data is also encrypted while in transit. Um, and uh, no one has access to your data, not even us, no, because nga, it's encrypted. So essentially what happens is you will need to, normally nga, what, the challenge is when we provide customer service, sometimes we have to, mas madali sana kung nababasa natin, pero hindi, privacy. So that, that's one mm. part of it. Aside, of course, from like other um, like practices that we instituted to make sure that it's there. Um, one of the things also that we did was um, in terms of like the BIR's visibility, the BIR only has visibility on your filings. They don't mm -hmm. have visibility on your transactions. No? Okay. So that's very clear naman when we work with them. So essentially, when I close down the business and I terminate my account with Taksumo, all the data that's in your system is parang vanquished ba? Purged from the system? Yeah, download mo na lahat. You can download, kasi everything's there naman eh. So just download oh, everything, right. store it in your system. And then yes, if you like 
if you ask us to delete your system, we will delete your system. The principle we follow is that you own your data. So it's nice. your call what you want to do with it. Yeah. Nice. Okay. And then follow-up question, no? uh, when using the service, what's the average cost siguro, on an annual or per month basis for, let's say, a startup company? If right. you can give like a quick computation now. Right. Um, the average cost that we have is for, let's say, you're a sole prop mm. um, and you are, let's say, um, you know, filing percentage tax, income tax, you know. Mm. Hindi ka no 8%. Kasi 8% is really easy, no? 8%, meron mm. kaming deals that are like 300 a month. Uh, oh. But if you're like filing the non-8% ones, then it's about, I think, mga around, uh, the cheapest we have is 800 per month. Uh, okay. But of course, the rates... Uh, lower if you get like longer term deals so ganun, mm. i mean as with any subscription plan so ganun naman siya ah so as you extend your ano parang may discount may parang kumbaga parang ano no? if you get an annual plan it's cheaper we also have two years if you have two year plans it's also cheaper it's 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 cheaper pa than annual okay. so up to you kung ano yung it's ano. cheaper it's cheaper actually to my service no just to share uh, i hired an accountant to do my books no i pay him 25 every quarter so I'm paying him 10,000 a year. So that's cheaper. Mm. Diba? Yeah. Oh, oh. So depending on what's going to work for you. Yeah. Mm-mm. Yeah. Yeah. And then you can, you said you can even do it in the beach. <laughs> yeah, actually. <laughs> so that's very important to other people. Okay. Yes. So we have more questions. Pa. Let me just pull it up. But very interesting, guys. No, if you can uh, ask more questions. Pa. I think uh, my fiance is here, si Cheska. She was asking about using EPS. Uh, could you talk more about that? I think that was EFPS, no? EFPS, sorry. Uh, right. Oh, I think I, uh, Richard shared that a while Richard, ago. Yeah. EFPS can, is basically like it's, it's online and you can use that to uh, file your forms. But how it works is that it's the form. You fill hmm. out the form online. Um, so yun yung challenge niya. you still have to understand how to fill out the form and then you then pay through banks so normally yung banks meron silang payment portal ng EFPS so yun like Union Bank you can get a, 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 an account with Union Bank and ask them to hey give me access to your EFPS magbubayad ako so ganun yung mangyayari EFPS the alternative okay. kasi is yung manual na nabanggit ni Richard and also EBIR forms so EBIR mm. forms naman is basically an application you download it that's what I use. On, oh, oh, that's, that's what it I only use. runs on Windows. So if you're on Mac, you're Windows. So, <laughs> yeah. so <laughs> siya. Tapos, um, you use that to file the form, which is essentially like APS. Uh, the mm. thing to note is that there are attachments pa, and there's a different application pa for that that you should use. Mm. So download mo yon, tapos gagamit mo, yun, fill out mo isa isa, tas ganon dalhin pa file mo. Tapos yung bayad mo, yung dabangit mo nga pwedeng through Union Bank portal, yung payment mo. So what you're saying, if you use Taksumo, it's a one-stop shop for everything. Mm-mm. It's everything na, so hindi ka na Okay. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Okay, we have another question. Uh, Richard can also answer this. It's about filing inventory report to BIR. We didn't know that you had to do this. We always had zero inventory at the end of the year because we only buy what we need uh, if there are orders. So what's, is there an issue without filing inventory? Because you have to keep yes, your books, so. no? Yes, so um, basically, your uh, filing your inventory this is a information return na kailangan i-submit ng taxpayer to the taxing authority. Uh, it is important kasi when they do the audit, one of their informations that they're using is the inventory list. Kasi if your sale of goods, yan, basically you have a cost of goods sold, and then for accounting, no, medyo ano to, technical, eh, they can always compute yan, theoretically how much would be your expenses. So if they find out na they found out na wala kang inventory list pero doon sa FS mo or doon sa records mo you're maintaining an inventory so there would already be a parang uh, administrative penalty yeah. yes so it's better na mag-file ng inventory list kasi uh, if inadvertently na ginagawa ng taxpayer yon uh, it might be a ground for BAR to proceed with a audit so that would trigger a audit. So ayaw natin mangyari yan. So better to comply rather than uh, mas lumala pa yung problema sa dito. So uh, does Taksumo have ano, 
uh, EJ, does it have an enterprise uh, tool, parang inventory mm. management tied in? Meron ba? Um, we work it... with our partner CPAs for that. So actually, ah, okay. yung partner CPAs namin, they could provide like more customized services you know, specific mm. to your business, which makes sense. Um, tapos, mm. they're able to reduce their rates because like the tedious part of it, they use Taksumo for it. Taksumo, yeah. So it's all automated. Na. Okay. So question, another question, no? uh, I also want to know what the answer is here. So, for example, yung business is in San Juan. They're based in San Juan. Is it okay to register their home as the business address? And my, my question there is, are there tax implications when you sell the home, the house later on? Because you're using it for business. Eh? Okay. Uh, first question, um, ang business is San Juan. Uh, yung bahay pa din is within San Juan vicinity. Kasi, Hindi yung mention, yes, think, pero let's assume. Oh. assume. I think there would be no issue kasi uh, yung RDO, yung business, and then yung bahay, yung official home address niya, would be on the same le- on the same jurisdiction of the RDO ng San Juan. So I think walang mm-hmm. issue yun. Magkakaroon lang tayong issue or challenge if hindi siya sa San Juan. So for example, uh, let's say sabihin natin Laguna. Yeah, Laguna. Mm-hmm. Pwede naman siya magparegister dun sa San Juan. Ang magiging issue niya lang dito is ang pag-file ng tax return should be in uh, San Juan, not in uh, Laguna. I'll give you a good example. Meron kaming client, ang um, business nila yan na sa Ortigas. Eh, mas mura yung, yung local LGU. Ayan, local LGU. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so they, so that's those are the reasons why they do it. Eh. <laughs> Tsaka ease of doing business. Eh. Depende sa LGU. So, eh. Correct. Kasi mas mura, eh, di ba? Mas, ma- mas mura oh, yung local oh. business tax ng kag- as compared dun sa RTS. Now, ano yung oh. naging challenge nila? Kasi hindi pa rin sila nakakapag-transfer uh, ng records from BIR or TGAS or PASIG papunta doon sa BIR Cavite. Now, anong naging challenge? Every time that they have to file the tax return, every time that they have to submit the information return, it's not in RDO Cavite, but it is in RDO or TGAS. So imagine mo yung hassle. Nandong ka na sa Cavite, pero ang filing or submission ng mga information return, tatakbo ka pa from Cavite to Ortigas. Uh, Ortigas. Okay. O, oh, hassle nga yun. So, the follow-up question there is, if you register your home address as your business address and you conduct business there, meaning uh, that's where you keep stock of your inventory, nagiging parang depot na rin siya, is it subject to uh, parang any sort of tax when you sell the property later on? May ganun ba na implication? Um, i-analyze ko muna yung first layer ng transaction. Ginamit ko yung bahay no, as parang office ko. Mm. Uh, ang lagi nagiging tanong dyan ng no, mga taxpayer, pwede ba ako mag-claim ng deduction or expense? Kasi kung, kung you rent. Oh, mag rent ako ng bahay, di ba? Meron ako mm. rent expense, right? Pero nung rent mm. na ako sa bahay, pwede pa ba ako mag-recognize ng rent expense? Ang sagot Contra natin, uh, meron ka ba support documents yan? May support documents ka ba to support that there are really payment dun sa house yan? So basically, ang gusto mo dito, magkaroon ka ng allowable deduction. So basically, yeah. yun yung dapat i-establish. Otherwise, kapag walang documents, uh, kung nagbenta ako ng 100, wala akong expense, matataksan ako sa 100. Unlike kapag halimbawa meron akong sales na 100 tapos meron akong rent expense let's say na 60 so basically hmm. matatax lang sa akin 40 kasi meron akong expense na 60. Pero, pero nagiging pero challenge say, mo kapag sa bahay. Let's say you own the house. You own the house and then you're charging rent on that house. Diba? Some people kasi do that. Dapat they can meron. pay the corporation. May gagawin sila na parang yes. vehicle to to rent, di ba? So parang may separate corporation and another entity owns the house and then they pinapalabas na that, that entity is renting from that house. Di ba? <laughs> so ang question ko doon, when you I sell the house... dapat meron eh. Uh, when you sell the house, meron bang implication sa tax yan? Okay. Ideally, dapat meron kang expense na i-recognize kasi ginagamit mo yung bahay mo doon sa business eh. 
But the challenge is yung documentation. What would be your support documents to claim an expense doon sa uh, portion or yung uh, area na ginagamit mo sa bahay? So that's one. And then ang second question, kung ibebenta ko siya, ano ba tax implication noon? Uh, basically, kung ang, ang property is considered siya as capital asset, ibig sabihin ng capital asset, uh, hindi siya ginagamit sa business, ang tax na babayaran mo dyan is, ka, is final tax, capital gain tax, capital tama, gains. 60%. Yeah. Pero kung halimbawa, ginagamit mo siya sa business, hindi na siya capital asset. This is already considered as ordinary tax. So, dito, matat-subject ka na saan sa 30% na regular corporate tax. Kasi you are already engaged at sa business. Now, if you're an individual, yan. So, pwedeng lumaki pa yan kasi ang tax rate ng individual is graduated eh. 5-0 hanggang 35%. Unlike kapag corporation or unlike kapag partnership or yung simple na corporation, they are being taxed at 30% or 2% of the MCID, whichever is higher. Ayun. Yeah. Okay. So, may question tayo, sir, no? Uh, very interesting to because I keep on hearing it uh, from our fellow vendors. No, there was a recent law passed, yung BMBE uh, law. Uh, can you expound on this and how does it benefit our SMEs and how do you avail of this? Uh, what do we call it? A benefit, ba or a, diba? a feature or something? A service that the government is, has been offering. Uh, yung BME is, is more of a relief given to a small uh, businesses na pag ang income mo is or ang sales mo hindi pa umabot ng dalawang million, uh, you'll be free from any not paying any taxes. So, yun yung isang relief. But as the business grow, yan, pwede ka na ma-disqualify dun sa BMB na, na law. So basically, ina-avail yan sa, sa DPI and then ibigyan ka ng, ng parang certification na your RDD um, qualified for that uh, tax exemption. So if you are a qualified, ang advantage mo nun, wala kang babayaran tax sa BIR. Oh, Sorry, just to, just to add na lang din sa BMB. Yeah. Um, same thing, it will exempt you from income tax. But if you have mm -hmm. other taxes, you have to pay those. And normally, mm -hmm. hindi income tax lang ang binabayaran natin, may iba-ibang types. So yun, babayaran mm -hmm. mo yung types na yun. In our experience, BMBE, you get it from the LGU treasurer's of city treasurer's office. Either that or like a barangay treasurer. So depende sa area. Um, tapos sila, may quota ba yan? May uh, follow quota system? A bell kasi curve, ang parang pinaka-purpose pinaka niya is it it's uh -oh. supposed to... Um, uh, uh, incentivize businesses so that they could give employment. So meron mm. siyang uh, parang dapat may ma-achieve kang number of employees after some time. Pag hindi mo na-abot uh, din, ano, saka may limit din siya, talagang pang start. So kung hindi mo ma-abot, retro, siya. babayaran mo? Hindi, babayaran hindi, mo hindi, naman, hindi naman. Ah, hindi naman. <laughs> hindi naman. Pero parang, eh, okay, ba't ka okay. mag-re-renew? Wala ka naman na-employ, gano'n. Ah, okay. For that, for that particular year na hindi mo na uh -oh. yung requirements. Okay. Okay, we have a question also. Uh, this is from Tata, the very lovely Tata. Thank you for the question. She says she has a TIN number for Soul Prop, and then she also has a TIN number. I think it's the same TIN number for her employer. And uh, she's asking if she needs to register. Ba? Uh, her RDO is in Manila, but she lives in Santa Rosa. So, hindi na kailangan, no? Hindi niya na kailangan ng TIN kasi sole proprietor. Kasi ang discussion natin kanina, if you're an employer, I, I mean, you are a employee, yan, di ba? meron ka ng TIN eh. So basically, you can use the tax identification number when you uh, decided to put up a sole, no sole proprietor prop. business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yan ang ginawa ko, Tata. So I had that TIN number that I was using when I was employed. When I applied for sole prop, I used the same TIN number. Now, ang tanong is, kailangan ba magparegister? Yes, kailangan mo pa rin magparegister kasi di ba as a taxpayer or mm -mm. Uh, meron kang requirement to maintain a account and then to issue a uh, sales invoice or official receipt. And basically, magkakaroon lang tayo ng, ng, ng certificate of registration kapag nagparegister tayo sa DRR. I have a question rin, no? Uh, uh, for you guys, no? Kasi medyo nagkaroon tayo ng mga layoffs or furloughs this year, no? And usually, pag may furlough, may layoff, may parang settlement yun eh. They have like, they give compensation. 
Sometimes it's two months worth of your salary, three months, depending on the package. No? So, binibigay yun na lump sum. Eh. And sometimes, they give it gross. Are you supposed to, to file that separately? Na-encounter ko kasi yung dati. So, I was As an questioning. Oh, parang uh, I availed of an early retirement yes. package and then binigay sa akin. So, I was thinking, should I file that separately? Ah, on so my if, own? Uh, guess, mm-hmm. guess. If your source of income is just one employer, and this is from the point of view of an employee, okay? Yes. If your source yes. of income is one employer, okay ka na, you're, you're covered by substituted filing. What that means is that the filings of that company, enough na yon for, for you. However, okay. if let's say in the same year, meron kang ibang employer, then that means you have to file your own. Hindi ka na pwedeng substituted. Ah, so oh, if you... Okay. If you got employment on, the, let's say you left your first employer and you went to employer mm. number two. Mm. So, and then first employer gave you parang a severance package. Mm-mm. So, when you go to employer number two, the severance package has to be filed. Oh, normally naman, what happens Separately. when you're given that severance package? Nag-withhold na rin dyan oh. yung, ano, yung employer. Ah, nag-withhold na ba? So, so usually, oh. wala ka namang babayaran. Kailangan mo lang mag-file. Uh-huh. So, yun siya. Okay. Yung sinabi mong pag lumipat ka, that is within one year. Like, for example, you left the company, let's say, October, and then November, yes. you have a new job that's within the same year. You have to file your own taxes. Pag uh, it's good to know because a lot of uh, our members also are double hatting, no? Yes. As, so. they, diba? they're, they're, as they're testing their business, they're actually also employed. Mm-hmm. Diba? So, if... if, uh, if Meron silang kaso na ganyan, di ba? At least they know what to do. Yeah. But just to add, no, if you have a business while you're employed, you still have to mm. file for your business, ha? Mm-hmm. At the, sa annual, dun lang maghahalo yung employment income mo and yung business income. Pero Good. throughout the year, yung business mo may sariling filings yan. Good point, no? So if your TIN number that you use for your employer, di ba? Diyan kinakaltas for your salary. And then you also have a sole prop business using the same TIN number. So separate yun. So one separate. is done by your HR, your employer, and then you. Oh, oh okay. yes. Oh, oh. Ang dapat alam niya yan. So yung mga like, nagbamoonlight dyan, <laughs> mm-hmm. you should know what to do. <laughs> diba? And napaka-importante na uh, yung employee or yung online mm-hmm. seller uh, nag-engage uh, sa business, they should have a copy of the 2316, mm-hmm. DAR form 2316. Kasi sabi nga ni EJ, Uh, your will be required to file your income tax return. So, as a proof na nabayaran na yung tax, yun. so, kailangan natin ng tax certificate. And then, that tax certificate would be coming from your employer. So, BIR Form 2316. So, pag umalis ka, make sure na bit-bit-bit-bit mo yung 2316. So, uh, ipagsasama mo yun eh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then, uh, I have a question also, no? You guys uh, are familiar with the uh, Ayan, ano, ayan, Conrad, apply rin ng mix. Yeah, mix. Okay, mix income. Yes, tama. Very good question, Rejan. No? How, do, how does BAR, before I ask my question, how does BAR also trap online sellers? EJ, you mentioned that they have a data analytics. Could you uh, <coughs> yes. explain um, this more on how it yeah. really works? Well, they didn't share their secret sauce. <laughs> so okay. I guess that's part of the secret. Uh, but okay. no, but uh, just so you know, like for example, if you start advertising on Instagram, mm-hmm. mag ads mm-hmm. ka na, you yeah, sponsor so ads. <laughs> that's, that's one way that they actually look for people to to like follow and audit. Sometimes what they do, mm-hmm. yung mga auditors, they will order something from you. And pag wala kang mm-hmm. OR, biglang surprise, BIR ako, but wala kang OR, penalty, 50,000 pesos. Yun agad yun. Ah, ganun? Ganun uh, na? Yes. Wow. <laughs> so meron ka ng, this is our, I'm, I'm guessing this is a real case scenario that you yeah, we, encountered. Yeah, we have helped people na ganun, no? Um, yung isa, hmm. iniyakan na lang niya. <laughs> naawa yung RDO. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. Uh, pero, pero it happens. Oh. No? That's, that's also what they do with some doctors. Yung mga, kaya, yeah. kaya the doctors hate VIR, di ba? Because, they pretend that they're patients pala yes, oh, in disguise. Oh. Exactly. Ah, okay. so, magbabayad sila at walang OR. Ay, huli ka. Yun na. Okay. Yeah. Galing, oh. di ba? <laughs> kaya guys ma- always mahuli, guys. <laughs> uh, kaya you have to practice this, no? Ako, I always practice this. I always offer 
agad. I'm proactive. Sasabihin ko, meron ako OR. Diba? Ito na. This is what I'm going oh. to use. So, wala nang question eh. Tsaka documented yun eh. Kasi when people approach me sometimes, email, private message, binibigyan ko na ng diba, heads up na I have an OR, we can use it. Diba? So, be pro- proactive with that. Diba? I think that's also a lesson learned. Diba? And then, uh, my question is, yung house house bill, no? yung internet selling. Uh, do you guys know more about, about this and what is the impact in the uh, online industry? Is it, is it ano, is the house bill to, diba, to enforce talaga the BIR to go after online sellers? Yung ba ibig sabihin nun? Um, so, so uh, maybe may, maybe uh, si Richard has something else na alam niya. Pero yung, yung involvement namin before for this particular bill, we were invited okay. in a technical working session. Okay. And the intent was basically to promote internet selling. So ah, a lot promote. of it, oh, oh, well, oh, they, they actually oh. want they actually want it. So para okay. the bill is aimed at like making things easier for these people. Oh. Kasi we are always under the impression though that this bill is being created because other industries are being hit the, by the pandemic. Of course, BIR has their the targets, no, that they want to to meet, True. and they know the because of 11, 11, 12, 12, all of these things, the al alakas ng online selling na yun. and because the everything's shifting from click brick and mortar to click and mortar, mm-hmm. so it's their their way of the capturing lost revenue. Yeah. Ano Oh. Tama naman. And for me, I think kasi, I mean, for them to capture that revenue, make it easy for people to pay. Hindi exactly. naman lahat ng Pinoy tax evader. Oh. Diba? <laughs> wag, mo lang mapah- <laughs> wag mo lang pahirapan. Magbabayad naman yan eh. Alam mo yun? Oh, so, man. I think that's like where they're coming from with this, which is good. You know, that's mm. a change in mindset. So, I guess some of the listeners also, no, would also want to know, and this is quite basic, uh, how much is it to register with the BIR? Diba? I remember I paid less than 10,000 pesos. Tama ba? Is that still the rate now? Um, uh, uh, sige, sige. Richard, please. Basically, ano naman eh, uh, when you register with the beer, wala ka naman dapat bayaran. Kung meron ka man babayaran hmm. siguro, yung annual registration fee na. Hmm. So basically, uh, ganun lang dapat yung magkano yun? Cost. Kasi, uh, you or depende sa RDO. 500 for the annual 500. registration. Yes, okay. uh, Tapos siguro the other expense would be yung booklets mo na. Pag booklets mo na. na. Siguro yeah. mga ano yun, 1.5 to 2.5 lang yun. Um, although, ang masakit sa BIR is the oras. As in pila to death. Yung pila nga. So, yun yung, so, oh. so, you know, if you're a business owner, time is like, you know, really, yun yung premium. Talaga. So, talaga. Tsaka, ex- and at this point in time, exposed ka rin kung pumila ka. Exactly. Diba? You're, out, you're outside. So, if you want to safeguard your, 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 no, your health, Diba? Yes. You rather do it online. Yes. Uh, in fact, one of our vendors, niya, who I don't know if she's here, no, she messaged me kanina si Sam Espiritu. She was lining up Mm-mm. for the COR. And she showed me a picture of the line. Grabe. Parang pila sa, sa, ano, sa black sugar nung nagbukas. <laughs> parang parang As in, ganun. Hanggang eh. hagdan. Oo, totoo. Oo, so parang, grabe. di ba pandemic, guys? <laughs> oh, di ba? Ingat lang kayo. So it's good that you offer that service no in Taksumo. Yeah. So I guess that's all the questions uh, we have for today. Uh, thank you guys for spending time with us. Uh meron pa ba? Tata, question Ben o next share ka lang ng <laughs> not really related. Okay. So yeah. thank you guys. Thank you guys uh, EJ, Jonathan for sharing your time and your diba, knowledge. Very helpful, no? I mean, I have a lot of questions that I, I was able to answer on, on a personal level. Nakala ko, alam ko na. Kasi, yes. kausap ko parati accountant ko. Eh. So, so, yeah, it's very important. Diba? And we're also helping a lot of our SMEs professionalize themselves, no? So, this is good knowledge for everyone. Thank you so, so much, yeah. EJ and um, Richard, for being with us today. And then, guys, yun nga yung promo ni Taksumo. Don't forget Good. to check it out as well. Mm-hmm. So maybe for my um, parting words, I guess it would be to also encourage all our um, Let's Eat Para members to log in and to sign up uh, for Union Bank Global Linker. Because um, like I said, nga, it's really something that is very useful for our SMEs right now. Especially, I guess, for the, for the Let's Eat Para community. Daming 
lalo na right now in this pandemic, di ba maraming nagsisell ng food and stuff. So I think Global Linker, I think it would be a best platform for all of our, um, for all of the yeah. Let's Eat Para members right now. So again, thank you so much, Mark, also for being with us, for making this this webinar possible. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, Sir JP for, for making this webinar possible as well, and Mo Soriano. And yeah, mm-hmm. again, thanks EJ, and Richard, and Mark for being with us today. And guys, thank you. Yeah, don't thank forget you guys. to sign up Global Linker. <laughs> <laughs> Any last words, guys? EJ, uh, yeah, yeah, Mark? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll go first, no? Uh, it's Thanksgiving today, so I'd like to thank everyone for for investing in their time. This is actually, we're investing not only our time today, but we're investing in the future. It's always good to be above board. I've learned that lesson early on. Diba? If you professionalize your business, diba? you follow the rules, then a lot of things will open up to you. No? Because you won't have any inhibitions or you won't be holding back. Diba? You will approach the world with much confidence. So I'm very thankful for our partners to the Union Bank, Taksumo, Grand Thornton. These are all partners that we can work with. As I've said, uh, we are also a aggregator. So we aggregate partners that can help the businesses around us. No? So we really want to contribute, and this is our part in the process of nation building. So thank you very much for your time, and thank you for diba, helping us, mga mare at pare. Yeah. Oh, wait, sorry. Last thing, we would like to plug another webinar happening tomorrow, Practical okay. um, Practices, Generating Leads in the New Normal with um, Mo. Mo Soriano will be um, uh, moderating it. We will be with Tintin de la Not Cruz. Not Mo Twister, ah. Mo, Mo, Mo Soriano. <laughs> Mo Soriano, okay. yes. And Ana Santiago of Sales <laughs> for tomorrow. So, uh, Richard, and, um, Richard and EJ, any last words to all our viewers tonight? Ay, hindi. Afternoon pa pala. <laughs> <laughs> so, yun, basically, um, it's a good thing na yun nga, uh, we are having this kind of uh, platform where we exchange our ideas and experiences. So, I think ang common goal lang natin is we want to professionalize everything. So, it's better mm-hmm. that we start right at first para kapag lumaki na yung business, hindi ganun kasakit pagdating sa PIR on. So, it's better to be compliant at earliest now and then at least uh, we won't be surprised now we are growing. We are growing our business. Yep. And, and for me, naman, maybe I just wanted to, like, again, commend everyone for being here, for, for spending time talking about like one of the most boring things in the world, taxes. I think Richard can attest to that. Buhay namin yan, apparently. So, so it's great that you're here. So, uh, uh, you, know, you, you know, we're always here. If you need help, um, you can always reach out. Um, of course, uh, you know partners. As, as Mark said, we're we're all partners in all of this, and we all want the best for each other. You know, so so with that, you know, thank you again, Union Bank, Let's Eat Pare, um, for having us, and uh, thanks so much. If you need uh, Thanksgiving uh, food, uh, don't forget to go to Let's Eat Pare and support our vendors, and ask for an OR. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Right. Thank Thanks, you. everybody. Stay safe. Thanks, guys. Bye, guys. Thank, Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.